Salutations, ape friends. On today's episode of Electronic Ape Friends, I'm going to show you how to build a very simple drum machine component for Touch Designer. <laughs> Okay, so here's the very basic drum machine we're going to be building. Eight steps for the sake of brevity, and uh, only two instruments. But hopefully, at this point, you can imagine that you can easily make the 16 steps and add instruments as you would like. So let's get started on building this one. So we're going to start by dropping the bass. Bim bam. And the cool name of Drum Machine has already been taken, so we're going to name this one Drum Machine 1. Now, in the way I like to build my components, usually the ramps will be an input. Like, you could, I could build this component with its own ramp, but um, when thinking of large projects, you know, and incorporating this in the context of other components, having, like, one master timing ramp is uh, more optimal than several free-running ones. Um, of course, if you start getting fancy, you can design ways of um, normalizing these connections so that if you do have a master ramp, then it ends up unplugging the other one. And maybe I'll show you how to do that in another tutorial. But for now, let's get started real quick. So we've added our input. There's going to be an output also. And the output will be audio. And for audio components, I've decided that... I like to color them red so I know what's going on there. And that's just how I do it. I'm thinking of, you know, settling on a color for input ramps. I'm thinking yellow, but I'm not sure yet. So anyway, so we've got our inputs and outputs. Um, and now we're going to customize the component. Because here's another way I like to build things, is to have the interface mostly directly in the, in the parameters of the component itself and then I can just export to that when I'm building my fancier interface around it. Okay, so we're going to have two pages, and they're going to be one page per instrument. The first page is going to be the kick. And we're going to have a, um, a file selection component for kick file. And then we're going to have a bunch of toggle switches for um, the steps of our sequencer. So I'm going to call this one kick for the first step and then copy paste. And my reflexes would have me naming this kick one. But if you name it kick one and you copy paste, unfortunately all the following kicks will be named kick 12, kick 13, and so on and so forth. Which is kind of annoying, but if you remember to do it properly, it's fine. So kick one. And there we have it. And also keep things clean, there's this option over here called the section option, which you apply to the, um, well, you basically apply it to the parameter that's underneath the other parameter that you want to delimit as like two different, um, two different sections. Okay, so we've done that for the kick page. We're going to do, um, well, we're going to make another one for a snare page. It's going to be snare file. And snare. Okay, bim bam. So the network is going to look a bit like this. We're going to have, it's going to make use mostly of the copy chop, which is a um, pretty funky chop. So the first input are like triggers, and it triggers whatever chops you have that full up um, in the second input. And it's sort of like a lookup in that sense, but it just sort of triggers them. Um, okay, so we're going to get started by having our, our file spready for this thing. And you may be tempted to drop in an audio file which is kind of ready to go. But for these applications, it's better to have all the channels uh, in one, I don't know how you'd call it, but 
to use a file in pretty much so you can see all the channels off the bat. So we added the option up top to choose which files we're going to use. So we're just going to refer that by going parent dot par dot par kick file. And same thing for the snare. Okay. We're going to merge these. Add these to the bottom input of the copy. And now it's looking kind of kind of ugly with all these errors, so we might as well go and apply a file right away. So our kick, here it is, our snare, snare. And here are our files. Okay, next up, we are going to choose all our toggle steps. So kick. One, two, eight. Bam, boom. And these are going to be exported to a pulse, which is going to be driven by a lookup here. I think maybe you guys can see where this is going already. Right, so if you plug this in. math at the end of here to control the levels. And plug this into our output. Okay. So we want to export all these to the pulse. Um, so we can do that manually, which is kind of a drag, but here's a fun way to do it directly from the names and to do them all at once. So if you start having like really long, um, like if you build a really long sequence, it would say 32 steps or 64 steps, and you can't be bothered to manually export them. You can do it this way. And there's actually most definitely like a better way to do it than this, but this is pretty quick. So project one slash drum machine one, and then slash pulse one, and the parameter will be pulse from 0 to 7. Boom. So that's the way you name stuff if you want to export directly from the chop. So you have to specify the location of the operator and then the parameter. This should work. Bam. Okay, they're all mapped. That's great. Um, let's do the same thing with snare. Another merge. Bam, bam. Up in here. And that should be alright. Except, I already know this bug is coming up, but it's going to be a learning experience for all of us. Okay, well, first of all, what's going on here? We've got our channels that are split left to right. So, with the math, we're going to want to combine them by adding them. And now they should be dead center. Um, we'll probably get into panning and stuff in a later episode where I think the idea is I'm going to build upon like the small simple components such as the synth uh, we've built in the last episode and this drum machine and sort of build onto them these like fancier uh, workflow features. Okay, so there's a snare and it seems to be missing some of the hits, correct? Yep. So the issue here, uh, which will come up pretty often when you're doing this sort of sequencing with the pulse channels and the pulse chops and the lookup will be the pulse width. And also, you don't want these lookups when you're triggering pulses to be uh, to be interpolated. So you want this off and the pulse, you want to get it. There you go. drum machine and you can build your interface around that if you want let's go and then change the sounds oh that's it that's that's the sound I like all right so uh, there you go that was how to build a very simple drum machine in touch designer I hope you enjoyed it um, I 
you know, you can subscribe to the channel. I haven't figured out where I'm taking this just yet, but I'm going to be making tutorials. And definitely do leave a comment if you've um, if you got any questions or if there is something that, you know, if you've got a comment on something I could be improving particularly. So be good and have a nice day.